what are the habits that shorten your life and what are the habits that lengthen your life. I love ice cream mm -hmm. and I thought nothing of eating a half gallon at one sitting. If it wasn't there for you to eat a hundred years ago, maybe it's not a good thing for you to eat today. The uh, epidemic, certainly in this country but in many other countries, so that the term pandemic has been applied. They have to take responsibility and control of their own condition rather than hoping that someone is going to tell them what to do. If it continues like that, they say that in the next 20 years, everyone over the age of 50 will be diabetic. It goes without saying that a diabetic patient really should be following regular exercise and eating right. But a lot of patients may be doing all of that and unfortunately because the levels that we want are so stringent, that many of them are not able to achieve these levels even though they're doing the right things. Today, we will look at the recommended day-to-day -day care for a diabetic. We will also look at using lifestyle interventions along with conventional medications and herbs in managing diabetes. Prior to the lifestyle changes, I was uh, injecting over 100 units of insulin each day, and it wasn't very efficient. On top of that, my blood sugar was out of control, um, averaging over 250 uh, through the blood tests, my daily tests, and then the A1C that they give us is a, a three-month um, test. Diabetes management itself is quite complex and the more disciplined you are in terms of monitoring your sugars, your glycosylated hemoglobin and appropriately monitoring your complications in a timely fashion, a lot of long-term problems can be prevented. Diabetes type 2 nowadays and type 1, the management of these conditions is mainly prevention. And that is why it is recommended, number one, that they do follow up with their doctors frequently. They do check their sugars frequently, and they try to have their blood sugar checks done at, in the laboratory, as well as follow a proper diet. They need to keep their blood sugars well controlled, and for every patient that is going to be a different value. But a three-month average, which is called the hemoglobin A1C, should be measured to know what what is happening over the three months that they last saw their doctor. The hemoglobin A1C or glycosylated hemoglobin is a blood test, a single blood draw that gives an idea of average blood sugars of the individual for the previous two to three months. The A1C came up the last time I took it was 6.3 which is about a 135 average or less compared to 250, 260 average so it's almost in half with uh, uh, two-thirds less insulin. So you can just see the dramatic results. And my concern was that, that people were having to take uh, 100, 200 or more units, um, whereas now I, I can uh, feel much better with a, a minimal amount of insulin, with the hopes that maybe I can come off of insulin someday. There are various types of insulin, mainly they are uh, what we call the short-acting and long-acting insulin. We have newer insulins called analogs, which are modified insulin to uh, make uh, the glycemic control easier for the patient, improve the flexibility uh, of with meal timings, etc., avoidance of hypoglycemia, and to more physiologically mimic the pancreas glucose secretion. The pancreas secretes some basal insulin that is minimal amount of insulin throughout the day and boluses which are increased amounts of insulin to cover the meals that we eat. So the insulin therapy is designed to mimic that with bolus or short acting insulins and basals or long acting insulin and these are decided by the doctor and patient depending on the monitorings that the patient brings in on their blood glucose records. My insulin pump has helped me with my diabetes because it controls my blood sugars when I don't, when I would need a shot. If my blood sugar is really high, I would need a shot, but with the pump, uh, my insulin pump, it gives me a drip of insulin 
all the time to manage my blood sugar levels. We have newer devices which make taking insulin therapy more convenient. We have pen devices which make uh, avoids um, trying to mix insulin, avoids the problem of air bubbles. We have finer needles which makes insulin injections less painful. We also have uh, insulin pump therapy which is basically a device uh, which gives insulin in a continuous fashion called basal insulin. Well, I think that as long as she keeps up with this regimen and uh, I think the pump is, uh, the technology of the pump is becoming more uh, sophisticated, uh, we will get better control of the diabetes, we will get better control over the damage that the disease does to the little vessels. The doctors and my parents thought I was very mature to care for insulin pump and I didn't really know anything about it so I didn't know but my parents and my doctors said it was okay and they gave me the insulin pump. In short, she has been doing very well. I have not noticed any complications. Uh, she has uh, had hemoglobin A1C done regularly and these have essentially been normal. The main advantages of the pump are that hypoglycemias can be avoided. Dawn phenomena, which is increased blood sugars in the morning uh, due to the normal physiological mechanisms of increased cortisol, etc., which oppose insulin, can also be uh, controlled only with insulin pumps. Uh, other phenomena were called somogi, where the blood sugar it drops down and is followed by rebound hyperglycemia or high sugars can all uh, be avoided using insulin pump therapy. It also gives the patients control over the diabetes and improves the flexibility in terms, in terms of meal quantity and meal timings. Uh, insulin is generally injected under the skin and we advise the patients to uh, rotate the size of injection to minimize or reduce skin problems. Some people feel that if they're put on insulin, it's going to be forever. And that is not true. Again, patients are uncontrolled, they're put on insulin, they do very well, they could be off the insulin. It is not necessary that they are always on insulin. Uh, drugs that we have, uh, the original and earliest ones we have are sulfonylureas, which basically make the pancreas secrete more insulin. Examples of drugs in this classification uh, what we call the first generation sulfonylureas. Example is uh, clopropamide, also known as diabetes. We have the second generation sulfonylureas. Example is glyburide, uh, also known as micronase. In this class, we also have glipizide, also known as uh, glucotron. We have another class of drugs called biguanides. An example of drug in this class is metformin, also known as glucophage. These drugs work by decreasing the resistance of the cells to insulin. Glucophage, uh, I'm taking uh, three 850, so that's 2450 milligrams a day. These drugs cannot be used in type 1 diabetics. They have the added advantage of at least maintaining weight and improving the cholesterol profile in the positive direction. So very favorable for your obese type 2 diabetes with hyperlipidemia. We have another class of drug called insulin sensitizers. This class of drugs work by increasing the sensitivity of the cells to insulin. Uh, example of drugs in this class are uh, Avandia and Actos. They basically need the presence of insulin in the body and make that insulin work better. There are other classes of drugs used to manage diabetes and what really differentiates these drugs is the way they work. Uh, another classification of drugs is what we call the alpha glycosidase inhibitors. These drugs work by decreasing the absorption of complex carbohydrates uh, into the body. Uh, an example of a drug in this class is precoce. By slowing down the absorption of carbohydrate or glucose, they uh, ensure that the sugars remain even keel after a meal rather than having spikes in blood sugar after a meal. We have uh, another class which is actually a combination therapy whereby doctors uh, can use uh, the biguanides uh, such as metformin and combine it with uh, uh, a sulfonylurea 
uh, like gliburide for patients that are difficult to manage, whose uh, blood glucose is uh, really uh, hard to control. So doctors tend to uh, combine, uh, uh, you know, different classes of drugs. Uh, now, for diabetic patients, it's uh, very important that uh, they take their medicines uh, exactly as directed by the physician to minimize the fluctuating sugar level. Uh, the, if they are on insulin, it's uh, very important they, they follow the instructions. It's very important they inject the, uh, the insulin in the proper order. Uh, it's very important they, they stick to the same uh, type of uh, syringe they use. Uh, it's also very important that they stick to the same brand of insulin. Uh, these drugs, they have some different characteristics. Uh, for example, uh, metformin should be taken with food. Uh, the insulin sensitizers, they can be taken with or without regard to meal. The secretagogues, they should be taken half hour before meal. In general, these drugs, they are associated with some side effects. Uh, different patients will experience different side effects. Some patients may not experience side effects. So the important thing for patients is if they feel differently, you know, they need to talk to their healthcare provider about it. They need to talk to their nurse practitioner. They need to talk to their physician. Or they need to talk to their pharmacist. Taking medications as prescribed is an important aspect in preventing complications of diabetes. True or false? The correct answer is true. It is important for a diabetic patient to take medications as prescribed, along with eating a balanced diet, exercising regularly, and reducing stress in order to manage the disease and prevent complications. On episode 11 of Bad Sugar, the projections for the future are not pretty. Pandemic is here. You don't want to miss this final episode of Bad Sugar. Here are the projections about diabetes, what can be done, and how it can be done. It speaks for itself. Is there something you can do about this pandemic? Join us on this channel. Your lifestyle habits will never be the same. Well, you know, patients are allowed to make their decisions. But we as physicians have to tell them that if they don't, they're going to have problems. And one of the things that I have found telling patients is that they have to take responsibility and control of their own condition rather than hoping that someone is going to tell them what to do. If I had took the pills and went back to the doctor and kept on reporting to the doctor where I stopped, from 90 to 94, I never seen a doctor. And you had diabetes? Yeah. If patients uh, forget or they skip a dose, they need to take that medicine as soon as they remember. However, they don't need to double up. If the time is very close to when the next dose should be taken, then they just take the next dose. It is very important for patients to refill their medications on a timely basis to avoid skipping doses. It is true that the more medications patients get, the more likely they have problems, such as side effects of medications and also the expense of medications. And we have to think about, um, does it really work to put each patient we have on $1,000 worth of medication? Some, somewhere, we're going to reach a point where we can't afford it. In a holistic and integrative practice, I look at how you can complement traditional therapies with 
therapies that include herbs, nutrients, and there, there are sometimes drug-nutrient interactions, which I, I try to always keep in mind as I'm recommending uh, treatments for my patients. Uh, and in terms of side effects or adverse effects that you may get with nutrients, there are a few. They are far less uh, than our, our medications. And so many times patients wonder if they can use both simultaneously. And with physician guidance, it can very easily be done. The main purpose of the herbs that I'm taking are to, to thin the blood, uh, to try to ward off the diabetic retinopathy and things of that sort. Uh, keep my circulation as good as I possibly can keep it. A lot of my patients are very interested in how can they take care of their diabetes without committing themselves to a lifetime of medication. And sometimes that works for a time and eventually we have to go to medication. And sometimes they get a hold of them, their life and they make the changes that need to be made in diet, lifestyle, they lose the weight, they get exercising regularly and they completely reverse all the, diet, all the laboratory evidence of diabetes. The number of, of uh, treatments that we utilize in our office in terms of adding herbal therapies in an integrative fashion to the um, traditional medication therapies that we use, they blend very well and I have a number of patients that are using both and very successfully. Um, and it reduces the side effects. There's ways to help the um, the uh, person to be more insulin sensitive so that the insulin they're already making will work for them and take some of the uh, stress off their pancreas from making this constantly high level of insulin just trying to overcome the insulin resistance. Um, lipoic acid is an important nutrient that helps do this. Chromium is another important nutrient that can help. Uh, some herbs that are very helpful include things like uh, Gymnema sylvester, something called fenugreek. I probably was first exposed to it uh, through a, a TV program and then I sent away for a few things and, and got literature from the place that I bought my first ones from and I got some from a local health food store and I got literature from them and I've studied all the aspects of it to try to not take something that was going to harm me in any way. When, uh, when treating my patients with diabetes there are several um, nutrients that are important or vitamins, both vitamins and minerals um, probably the number one is a mineral and that's chromium because chromium is also called glucose tolerance factor and it's very important to assist the pancreas in its work of producing insulin and it helps with insulin sensitivity. Um, there's probably more than half of patients with diabetes are deficient in chromium and it makes the most difference to that half of the diabetic population that is deficient in chromium. Uh, patients who have uh, diabetes often complain of fatigue and one of the nutrients that's very effective at helping combat fatigue but also helps with insulin sensitivity is coenzyme Q10 and uh, this is one that sometimes is a little bit less familiar. It's not in the familiar ABC vitamin uh, category. Um, having mentioned vitamin C, vitamin C is very important. It's a very important antioxidant. I'm taking multivitamins and minerals. So uh, do you think this, the vitamins, tell me how the vitamins, the herbs are, are helping you? I think they're keeping my general health up. Uh, I don't have any problems catching colds. I don't ever come down sick with anything other than the diabetes. Diabetes is an oxidative condition. That means that it is constantly producing 
oxidation or free radicals in the body that cause damage to cells. And this is the reason for many of the complications of diabetes. So antioxidants are really important. And several of the antioxidant vitamins include vitamin C, vitamin E, lipoic acid is actually one of the B vitamins, and it is one of the most potent antioxidants of all. Antioxidants are also important for protecting the vision, and a uh, eye formula that includes antioxidant vitamins, as well as, usually it's a combination of vitamins, herbs, and minerals in the eye protection formulas, and they include things like the lutein and bilberry, and they also include selenium, which is an important antioxidant mineral, uh, as well as the lipoic acid and the vitamin C that we've already mentioned. Vitamins like panathenic acid, these are some things that are very important to uh, support the pancreas and do help in uh, improving insulin sensitivity so that their blood sugar levels begin to come down, they feel better, hopefully when we can help them to feel a little more energetic, then they'll do the exercise, which all by itself can burn off the blood sugar, and it can also improve insulin sensitivity. I put almost all of my um, diabetic patients on the omega-3 fatty acids from fish oil because cardiovascular problems is such um, an aspect um, of diabetes that needs to be taken care of, and it it helps, it helps almost every condition I treat. I really do recommend uh, omega-3 fatty acids. Even the President's Council came out and said this is a major nutrient that's missing in the American diet and that uh, most people could benefit from supplementing. There is an increasing amount of research being done on herbs in, in their use of diabetes and studies have looked at specifically the gymnema, uh, the um, fenugreek, and the uh, cinnamon. And some of those studies have been released in you know, the Journal of Clinical Nutrition, uh, the Journal of the American Nutraceutical Association. There's also many of them in even in the Journal of American Medicine, the British Journal of Medicine. So if one researches the literature, you'll find more and more articles documenting the benefit uh, of the, the herbs and the safety. Um, the, the herbs that have been used in diabetes, are, or at least that I've used in, in my clinical practice, have all a good track record of safety. So do you discuss with your doctors the different herbs you're taking? Yes. I've given them a list of everything to make sure there was no interaction between the herbs that I've been taking and the medication that he's prescribing. And so far, there isn't anything that has interacted or hasn't been anything that he said I couldn't take. The herb that I use most often is the gymnema, okay. and I use it in combination with the chromium, and that has worked very well to do things like control cravings. It controls hypoglycemia in people who may later in life get diabetes, but earlier in life have too much insulin production, and so they actually end up with kind of a low blood sugar, and they develop cravings that leads to weight gain, and down the road, they then end up with diabetes. I'm probably spending between three and $450 a month on various supplements and herbs. And I feel that it's very worth it. Because I, I do feel good. I'm pushing 79. I'm able to get out and work in my yard. And I play to people that are in their 60s in nursing homes. So I. I, I must be doing something right. And you've had no side effects from these supplements or herbs? None whatsoever. I assemble once every two weeks all the things that I'm going to take for each meal. And I have a divider that I place them in. That I have two that cover an entire week. So I only have to get all my 
bottles out every two weeks to assemble them. It takes me about 45 minutes to put them all together. So look, taking the whole holistic approach to allow us to bring in multiple important factors and you get a little benefit from the magnesium and a little benefit from the omega-3 and a little benefit from your CoQ10 and all the different things that we recommend, then you'll end up with a safe, natural approach that gives you satisfactory results. To order a DVD, go to our website, preventivecareweekly.com. A portion of all proceeds from the DVD will go to the Juvenile Diabetes Research Foundation, Inland Empire Chapter, California. We want to know what you think about this series. Tell us how we can meet more of your needs. Remember, our goal is to meet your needs and answer your questions about diabetes prevention and care. Log in on our website, preventivecareweekly.com, and give us your feedback. Prior to the lifestyle changes, I was uh, injecting over 100 units of insulin each day, and it wasn't very efficient on top of that. My blood sugar was out of control, um, averaging over 250. And we have to think about, um, does it really work? to put each patient we have on a thousand dollars worth of medication. Some, somewhere, we're gonna reach a point where we can't afford it. If patients uh, forget or they skip a dose, they need to take that medicine as soon as they remember. However, they don't need to double up. If the time is very close to when the next dose should be taken, then they just take the next dose. The main purpose of the herbs I'm taking to thin the blood and to try to ward off the diabetic retinopathy and things of that sort. This program is not intended to be diagnostic or prescriptive. Please consult with your doctor or health care provider before adopting any of the lifestyle changes or other measures discussed in this program. We do not recommend any medication changes. Rather, patients should seek medical advice from their doctors or health care providers.